Okay, here's a view that should be familiar by now. Uh, I'd like to take a comparison between the Google Docs word processing suite, Word on the Mac, LibreOffice, and Pages, the iWork offering for word processing. Now you're all really familiar with this by now. Uh, one thing I'd like to show you that we haven't really talked about, uh, under Insert, there's this drawing option. What this allows you to do is it allows you to create drawings so you can make things like flowcharts or technical diagrams, things like that. You can use it to create boxes and draw lines to connect them. But what I'd really like to talk about is this right here, the text box, because this is some functionality that we haven't talked about that it can actually be really useful. So you can put something in here like, um, I don't know, and put your phone number. And then with this, you can put this on the end and say you have like, I'm sure you've all seen those flyers where they have little tear off pieces at the end with a phone number or what have you. So we can put that and create one of those, but you might be saying, but hey, usually those go the other way. Well, if you click on this, you can rotate it. You can see by rotating it like this, you can format it to be one of those little pull tabs. So we go save and close and there's our element. We can cut and paste just like we can with an image and put this at the bottom and then say we have the text of our flyer in here and we can of course keep putting these on and we've created a, a little pull tab flyer just like that really really quick really handy and the rest of this is probably pretty familiar to you guys by now one thing I don't know if I ever mentioned is this is a zoom level so one thing that's nice is you can click fit and it will fit to the size of your window this is really nice as you if you've been working for a long time and you've got kind of tired eyes going on that happens to me kind of a lot so okay I think we've probably seen enough of the Google Docs offerings. So let's look at Word on the Mac. So this is Word. It should look pretty familiar to a lot of you. I think many of you have a copy of Word. Uh, first thing I want to point out is this also has the zoom function. So it has the slider on the lower right hand corner so you can fit the sort of editing region into your window. And it has many of the same features. It has you know, changed the font decoration, the font face, the font size. It also has buttons to increase and decrease the font size. The thing I always say is it's very similar to Google Docs. It just it has more of everything. Like it, it has the same basic functionality, but it has more ways of doing it and it, more ways of sort of customizing things. Like for example, with tables, you can insert tables, but it has all of these predefined styles. Now you could create these style of tables in Google Docs. That would just take more work. So let's put some text in here. We can also insert the a text box but in here you kind of draw it directly and then you can edit it and type whatever you'd like and you can rotate it just like you can in Google Docs and otherwise this has much of the same functionality it's sort of laid out differently obviously it has this they call it kind of the ribbon where it'll allow you to insert tables of contents change the settings manage citations a bunch of different things almost all of these features are available in Google Docs they're just not quite as refined. One thing I would like to talk to you about though that Google Docs does not offer that is mail merge. So I want to look at the mail merge manager. So what mail merge is is it's essentially a mechanism for creating like forms the be they envelopes or form letters basically lets you to define certain fields and have values automatically populated in those fields. To give you kind of an illustration of what I'm talking about, we're going to create a bunch of envelopes. So we'll click Create New, and we'll go Envelope. And then we're just going to click Position, and we're going to pick Auto for everything. Basically, this allows you to change where the delivery address and where the return at or the delivery address and the return address will be positioned. So you can sort of shift, you know, its position from the left or from the top. So you can arrange it however you'd like. So if you have decorative envelopes or something, and, and the idea is that you will create these forms and then you'll print them directly on an envelope. So you click OK, and then click OK, and then this populates your... So now we're going to get a list of contacts. I'm going to get it from my address book. I'm going to put the university's address and this. So once we have written in our return address, now we can start to populate the the recipient address. One thing I want to point out before we get too much further is these are text boxes just like we were looking at before. So if you want to reorient these, you can do that. Like if say for some reason you wanted your address to be upside down or if you're 
writing on like you know fancy stationery you can move it to the side now you have to be a little careful because it doesn't always format nicely when you do that but it is something that you it is an option that you have so when we have this field we can basically pick from this list of options and drag these things in and what this will do is it places um, this here which is this is a placeholder essentially what will happen when we run the mail merge is it'll come through it'll look for these braces and then these values within the braces and wherever it sees these it's going to put the values for full name that it finds in the address book so we're also going to come through on this list and find address and put that in here and then we can format these however we want so however we place these in this text box that's how they're gonna show up when we run the mail merge so we can make them justified or centered or however we would like them set up now unfortunately my contacts are not well they're a mess so this is gonna look a little interesting so once we have this arranged how we'd like we come down here and we can see we have merge to printer and this will just send it directly to the printer that's usually not a great idea because since this is an automated process you may not necessarily get what you think you're going to get so a better choice is to click merge to new document so i'm going to click on that and it's going to open up a new window i'm going to close this and we can see how that worked and like i said unfortunately my contacts are kind of a mess so you know this doesn't look that great but if we scroll down a little bit we can see some of these will work out alright you can see this is sort of how it's supposed to look basically you'll have the address that you typed in here and then it'll fill in with whatever values you have I believe this is Neptune's net in Malibu if none of you have eaten there if you like fried food I'd absolutely recommend it it's delicious here's a good example this is of course shave it in Thousand Oaks which is really delicious shave ice apparently I mostly have restaurants in my contacts but you can see here is a really good example of what it would look like and then you could send this directly to your printer and print straight on envelope so like I said it's this works really well if your contacts are clean mine are not so it it's kind of a mess but where you'll see this and where you, where you will often use it is at a business or at a job oftentimes they'll say okay here's a list of contacts and we need all of their names on a form letter or we need to generate envelopes to mail them the university does this when they generate your acceptance letter with your user ID on it this is actually one of my jobs when I worked at Channel Islands as, as a staff member was to generate those letters so this is actually something that I used pretty regularly was this mail merge function so like with most things with computers it's good to know that it exists and if you ever need to use it you can look through the help or maybe reference this video to try and figure out how to use it and this is something that most word editors will let you do uh, Google Docs is one of the limitations it doesn't have the connectors to actually import contacts that's one of the one of the few limitations of it